Hey there and welcome back to another My Hero Academia video. And today, I want to delve a little bit into the villains of My Hero, and more specifically, what the hell's the end game for each of these characters? Surely they're not just going to all end up dead. Will there be absolution? Jail? What makes the most sense for each of them? And so that's kind of what I want to cover today. From a story perspective, what makes the most sense for each character? And of course I will need to say, there will be manga spoilers in this, so yeah. Be wary if you're a show only or are not up to date with everything that's been going down. So we're going to start off guns blazing with All For One. The big bad guy. The ultimate villain. And whilst this is not something that's strongly encouraged by the source material itself, in that Deku always tried to save everybody and heroes are not supposed to kill people, but surely there is no end game where All For One is able to walk away from this alive. I mean, the dude's a menace. He's been running around for over a century doing dastardly evil things. He's killed numerous heroes, killed numerous one-for-all holders, put a time limit on All Might's career, and then came back, minus a face, for round two to end his career for good. Then they lock him up in the most secure facility in Japan, and yet he still puppet masters things and manages to bust out in the end and bring about a modern day apocalypse in Japan. So, the narrative has now proved, beyond reasonable doubt, that he cannot be trusted to continue existing. Even when mutilated and locked away, he proves himself the most dangerous villain in the world, and even masterminds the death of the USA number one hero as soon as she arrives in Japan. Yeah, this is a kill on sight level villain now, right? I just don't think it would be narratively satisfying for him to survive at all. But neither would it be satisfying for Deku to kill him, because ultimately, that goes against his core characterization. So, whilst he does need to die, who the hell kills him off? All Might's too weak now, and none of the other heroes would have that same satisfaction as if it was Deku. But like I said, that does not fit with his character. So, that really leaves only one option. Another villain. And more specifically, a villain whose entire life has pretty much been destroyed by All For One. Shigaraki. And I mean, it really has been destroyed, hasn't it? All For One killed his grandfather, which landed his dad in foster care after his mum couldn't handle it and didn't want to lose him too. All For One then killed her, and this made her son feel abandoned. Which led to his hatred of heroes, which led to his abuse of his son, which led to the brutal manifestation of Tenko's quirk, which then led to the death of his entire family, which then led to Tenko becoming Shigaraki and being moulded into a degenerate monster by All For One. Therefore, I think it would be poetic justice if after all of that, Shigaraki is the one who gets his revenge on All For One by finishing him off once and for all. And really, he's the only fit for this sort of role at this point. And so, I guess this leads into Shigaraki. And I have actually done a video solely dedicated to what his likely ending game is going to be, so yeah, check that out if you want. But realistically, I think similar to All For One, there's no adequate end game for his character that really doesn't end up with him being dead. For one, like All For One, he is too strong. And two, he's way too far gone. I don't see what future his character could possibly have. The port is ruined. I mean, a whole big story point for Deku in the manga is coming to terms with the fact that he might not be able to save Shigaraki, but he can still try. So I don't think that Deku's just going to straight up kill this guy. But I wouldn't be surprised if there was a big three-way showdown that sees both our big bad villains bite the dust. So that brings us to Darby. And I think it's clear that Darby's endgame involves a final showdown with Shoto. Because whilst Endeavor and he have a more intense and intertwined history, ultimately Endeavor's probably unable to do what needs to be done to defeat his son. He would just get in the way. But Shoto doesn't really know Toya. He probably has vague memories, but nothing too concrete. He doesn't really remember the happy little boy who just wanted to make his dad proud. His primary experience is that of Darby, the deranged serial killer who seems to be out to get him and his dad. So really only he will be able to properly take this guy down. Plus, I just think it makes sense from a narrative perspective because they're both creations of their father. It makes sense that the bad one and the good one have to clash. And as for a final fate for Darby, well, it's pretty clear that he's not well. Much like his mother, his entire life's been twisted and broken down by Endeavor's pursuit of a great legacy. But I don't think that it necessarily means he can't be helped or saved. Yeah, he's done some truly heinous things, but I don't think he's necessarily an evil person at heart. He's very traumatized. And nor do I think he's at that 
end of the line state like Shigaraki is in terms of his mental health. I mean, it's not great, but it could get worse. And honestly, I think it would be a fitting ending for him to be put in that hospital that Ray was in. Except maybe with a bit of a beefier security team. Although, is there like anti-quirk cuffs or something like that? He could wear those. I mean, his family banding together to get him help is what I would expect from his ending. And honestly, I think it makes the most sense for both him and for his family. And then this brings us to Toga. Honestly, let's be real, she's a serial killer and a very deranged one. And in all honesty, if it was up to me, she'd just get the prison treatment. Just prison. But I don't know, something about her interactions with Deku and Uraraka make me think they're going to pull a half-assed attempt at a redemption where she realises what she's been doing is wrong and begs them to help her change. And so realistically, based on the writing, she might be another candidate for the mental hospital. As I reckon that based on how she acts across some of her other arcs, she can have a chance at a decent rehabilitation. I mean, oh god, you could never let her out, but she could improve with time based on what I think we've seen. Either that, or they could just chuck her into prison and call it a day. But yeah, I just don't think that that would be the most likely scenario, simply based on how her arcs progressed in both what we've seen in the anime so far, and also based on the manga. They'll have their confrontation, she'll figure out why she's so fixated on them, and that'll be that. But then on the other hand, her backstory is truly just awful, isn't it? Could she possibly just be another example of a villain who can't be redeemed? I don't remember there being any real reason behind why she is the way she is. She's just like that. Like when she killed the bird and showed her parents whilst drinking its blood, that was pretty deeply disturbing. Or when she attacked the dude at her school, or any of the other murders that were referenced when she was first introduced. And now I've talked my way into being two minds about this. Maybe just chuck her into Taurus and call it a day. I don't know. But I feel like it's one of those two options. I just don't see them pulling the trigger on her dying. And then this gives us Kurigiri. And honestly, I just don't know with him. I hesitate to say they'll figure out how to revert him if they can, because ultimately, he is a reanimated corpse. How much Shirakumo is even left in there? Only a little? Or maybe everything? I don't know. It's never really explained. I just have a feeling that this is going to be one of those things that's a permanent consequence that can't be fixed. He's gone forever. But then on the other hand, is that too depressing a fate? I presume that by the end, a few more characters are going to be facing the gallows. So maybe returning a character who's been lost would be a fitting counterbalance. I don't know. Of all the villains, I'd say this is the one that is most up in the air for me. And then why not look at Spinner? And look, let's be real, he's going to jail. He's not crazy, he's not evil, he's not monstrous, and yet he still helps these truly awful people. Yep, off to prison mate, see ya. And honestly, I really do think that that's it for the majority of the relevant villains and what's going to happen to them. So now I think I'd like some of your opinions. What end games do you envision for some of the characters? Think I'm on the money? Or do you see things a little bit differently? I'm curious for your thoughts, so make sure to leave a comment and let me know.